What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel and if you're new to this channel, welcome. I'm Misty Murray. I'm litigation paralegal and founder of Arrow Consultants. So paralegals, legal assistants, secretaries, we're all pretty used to finalizing briefs. We've got to gather all the exhibits. Sometimes we've got to gather the case law. We've got to pull it from Westlaw or LexisNexis, and we've got to put those exhibit stickers on there and just really finalize it for the judge. Now, a lot of us pride ourselves in the work that we do for those courtesy copies that we have to deliver to the judge. Now, some of us still might have to do that and a lot of us aren't able to do that anymore due to the pandemic. However, we used to go so far as to gathering those little tabs on the side and no one could ever find like A through D or one through five because those exhibits were always taken. However, with the shift of the pandemic and the drive into technology because of the pandemic, judges are now having to review those briefs electronically. So as a result of that, they are shifting the way that they require those briefs from you. And states like New York are now passing new administrative orders requiring law firms to finalize briefs with hyperlinks within the brief to your exhibits and sometimes outside of the brief entirely to e-file documents on another docket. So in today's video, I've got another Adobe Acrobat Pro tutorial for you. In today's video, you'll learn how to finalize that brief, combine it with your supporting case law and your exhibits, bookmark it, and hyperlink those exhibits and supporting case law within your brief. In addition to that, you'll also learn how to create hyperlinks to internal documents that you keep on your firm's own network. So this is really just helpful for intra-office sort of memos and communications, but we're gonna learn how to do that in today's video. And of course, we're certainly going to learn how to create those hyperlinks outside of the brief altogether and to an external web page. Now, regardless if this video applies to you, I guarantee that by the end of today's video, you're definitely going to up your technology game when it comes to using Adobe Acrobat Pro. So without further ado, let's dive into things today. So if you're working on a brief, the very first thing that you want to do is finalize that brief. And in order to do that, you really need to take the native Word document and convert it to PDF for an electronic signature. Now it's really important that you convert that initial Word document to Adobe. You do not want to print it and scan it and then go save it, save yourself all those steps. You really need to bring it natively into Adobe. Now, in order to do that, you can right click and send to Adobe and it will create an Adobe document or you can print to Adobe and instead of printing to your printer, you print to PDF or you save as PDF. There are multiple ways that you can bring that document natively from Word to Adobe, but you need to do that. And I'll show you here in a little bit why that is super important. So once you have your brief finalized, the next step you wanna take is you wanna bring all of your supporting documents with your brief into one folder. This will just really help you combine things. Now, in order to bring those things together, you have a few options. You can highlight your brief and all of the supporting material as long as they are PDFs. You can right click and you can combine in Adobe. Alternatively, you can use the create PDF tool and you can bring those documents in one by one into your Adobe. This step is completely up to you, but regardless, you wanna combine all of those documents together into one document. Once you have brought all documents into Adobe, you need to structure how you want them ordered. You definitely want your brief on top, but structure your exhibits and your supporting documents how you need them structured within that brief. Now, you have a bookmark section right there, and that is really important because you need those bookmarks to pull into the single PDF to help you create those hyperlinks later on. Now you will have an opportunity later on to change the way that those bookmarks read and you might want to, but if you can go ahead and change those bookmarks right here in this screen so that those bookmarks are brought through into that single PDF 
right the very first time. Once you have all of your documents ordered in the way that they need to be ordered, then go ahead and start combining. Click that combine button and start combining your brief together. So from here, you'll have the option to save this document. You wanna go ahead and save it in that same folder. You save it and name it however you want to. But once you save it, it should immediately open that single PDF so that you can begin to manipulate it more from here. Now, starting from this section, you want to open up the left-hand pane so that you're able to view your bookmarks within your single page Adobe document. Okay, from here, you want to navigate to this section in your brief that requires that very first hyperlink. If that's a case, if that's exhibit, let's navigate to that area in your brief. Now, the reason why it is so important to bring in the native Word document into Adobe rather than a scanned and OCR version is because it makes it a whole lot easier to highlight the words that require the hyperlinking. It doesn't require you to go into edit mode, which may change your paragraphs and the way that they're structured a little bit. So instead of going into edit mode, you should be able to right away navigate to the section that needs hyperlinking, highlight that section, right click, and we're gonna insert the link right from here. When you right click from here, I want you to click create link. This will open up a new window, allowing you to modify the link appearance as well as the link action. So let's start with the appearance. You have some options. You can see those options right here. You can choose the options that either conforms to your local rules, judges requirements, or simply what looks and functions best for you. Once you've set the appearance of your link, now it is time to set the action. The first option is go to a page view, and that is where you are able to hyperlink within the single PDF. Your next option is open a file, and that is great when you are linking a memo to other internal documents that is saved on your in-house server. Perhaps you are doing a memo about security rules and you wanna cross reference with some case law that is saved on your network. So the second option is really great for that. And the final link action is setting it to an external web page. And this is what I talked about in the intro where states like New York are requiring those hyperlinks to e-file documents on their electronic docket. So let's choose the first option, which is go to page view. So once you've set how your link needs to look, let's go ahead and set that action. Let's start with the first action and setting it to another page located within that single PDF. So after you click go to a page view, click next and navigate to the bookmark referencing the section you want to link to. Then click set link. And this is why it is so important to make sure your bookmarks are brought in so that you can easily navigate to it for setting the link. Now, if your bookmarks were brought in and they didn't read how you needed them to so that you could easily navigate to them and, and you weren't really sure what it was that was brought in, that doesn't help you at all. So it's really important that you have those bookmarks named properly so it makes navigating to them much easier when you're setting those links. You can set links to any bookmark section in your single PDF, which will allow the judges and opposing counsel to toggle in between the sections of your brief a little bit easier. So once they see an exhibit labeled in the brief, you know, they're going to see it underlined or circled or however you have your appearance and they're gonna be able to easily toggle to that section. Now let's take a look at the second link action where you are linking to internal documents on your own network. Now this would work really great for medical records. Perhaps you have a medical record summary or an index that you have prepared and on that medical records index, you have a hyperlink to the medical records that you are referencing within that section of the index. So get your wheels turning on this one, but it makes it really easy to create almost super interactive memos, if you will, um, to bring all of the resources together to make it much easier on the end user to be able to navigate to wherever they need to. So let's go ahead and start creating this action. 
Now, once you have the appearance set however you need to, I want you to click the bubble next to open file and then click next. Your file explorer folder for Windows users or your finder application for Mac users should appear. When it does, navigate to the chart in your network, click on your document and click open. When that window appears, you would navigate to the document that you're wanting to hyperlink or reference within your memo or your medical records index and go ahead and click open. A new window will appear at this time asking you how you want that external resource to appear. You have a few options here. My preference is new window, but if you prefer, you can give the end user the option. I do not recommend choosing the last option, which is open in existing window. I actually don't want the user to navigate out of the original memo. I want it to kind of open up in a new tab, just like we do in our internet browsers. So choose your option, click OK, and there you go. Remember that you should always be doing a little quality control along the way and making sure that all of your links and hyperlinks are working properly and functioning how you need them to. Now let's head back into our actions and set the appearance how we want to. And we're going to choose the last option on this action, which is opening an external web page. So what I want you to do is I want you to click the bubble next to open a web page and then click next. A new window will appear at this time asking you to enter the URL that you want that user to externally navigate to. So for the sake of this tutorial, we'll go ahead and navigate this user to Zoom. Now click OK and go ahead and test that link. When testing the link, you may get a security warning cautioning you about this link. Now this is just an extra layer of protection that your company administrator has probably put in place it's okay to go ahead and click that allow button. But before you click allow, make sure that you check the box asking you to remember this action for that site for all PDF documents. If that box isn't already checked by default, you wanna go ahead and check that box and then click allow. Once you click allow, you should be immediately taken to that webpage. So there you have it. Three ways to create links and hyperlinks, both internally and externally within your briefs and your memos, summaries, indexes, whatever it is that you're preparing. As a result of this, everybody will be able to navigate much easier within those electronic briefs because of your Adobe expertise. If you liked today's video, please give it a thumbs up and considering subscribing to this channel and of course clicking that bell notification so that you receive a notification of each time I post a video on here. Of course, good luck to you and all that you do because this crazy legal industry needs a paralegal boss just like you. Have an amazing rest of your day, a weekend ahead of you, and I'll see you guys back here on the next one. Bye guys.